cook like a normal person. Now as you can see I just got back from work and I have to feed a family of four. I'm going to show you how you can do that for under eight dollars. What I have in here is approximately five potatoes diced up nice and small in a cold ice water bath with salt so they don't turn gray. These potatoes this is probably about 90 cents worth of potato. The whole bag was a dollar eight. I used five of the potatoes that's about half so you got about 80 cents of potatoes. All right, what we have here is ground meat. Now you say, well, sorry, ground meat is about three, four dollars a pound. Yes, it may be, but however, to save money, I bought a four dollar piece of beef meat, ground it myself, and ended up getting about three pounds of ground beef. Out of that three pounds of ground beef, inside here, minced finely, is onions, bell pepper, and garlic. Inside of that is my brother-in-law's spicy seasoning. All right, mixed up nice and fine. Everything's all mixed up, ready to go. You need about 10 cents of oil, and then you'll be able to feed a family of five people. So watch how this happens. All right, so. Let's go over here, turn your stove on. Put about 10 cents of oil in there, just enough to get a light coat on the bottom. See, nothing too bad, nothing fancy. You don't have to be a genius here. All right. Wooden utensils. You're on a budget, don't need to buy all the expensive stuff you see on TV. You can go to a flea market or any little bargain store and get you a set of wooden spoons and wooden uh, utensils for about two to three dollars. What's the best thing about a wooden utensil? If you accidentally leave it in a pot, you won't burn the crap by yourself. All right. Now, I'm going to take this, add it to the pot. Nice and easy. Nothing complicated. Like I said, you don't need a degree in, in mathematics to do this. Take your flat spoon and begin to cook it. Just turn a light on here. Little exhaust fan, my light doesn't work, but that's okay. What I want to do here is show you how when I first got married to my wife, we had to cook on a budget. A lot of you were in college, a lot of you E1, Z2, Z3, Z4, you got two kids, and it's kind of hard to stretch that military dollar. What I'm showing you right here, eight bucks you'll feed the family of four, trust me. All right, you can hear it starting to fry down. This is what you want. You're gonna brown this meat up real good. This is so simple. Unbelievable. All right, the magic is starting to happen. All right, you let that fry. All that's frying, you don't want to dump all this water into your food, so you want to go and dump your water out of your potatoes. For those of you who don't know, very cold water and salt will keep your potatoes from turning that nasty gray color. Nobody wants to uh, eat or be seen eating nasty gray potatoes. Nice and clean. 
chop them up into nice little fine pieces. No need to be a perfectionist here and have everything perfectly cubed. If you got OCD, then yeah, this might take a while for you. But go ahead on and cut everything up nice and easy. Now, pot's getting a good boil roar going here. It's going real good is what you want. Turning everything. You don't want to just let it fry all the way down at once because what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a big beef head in here. You want to keep moving it so you can separate the ground meat. Now, one advantage to grinding your own meat as opposed to buying that meat that comes in a giant pink slab is that this meat will separate a lot easier because you've ground it yourself. All right, and when you ask, well, well, Sandra, so where can I get a grinder or whatever? You can go to any little market or... Uh, Let's see, flea markets sometimes have them, little hand grinders. If you want an electric grinder, you can probably go to your local PX or commissary and get one for about $20 to $30. I know it's a little expensive, but it'll pay for itself in the long run. But when you're paying 5 to $6 for a pound of meat, that's 80 to 90, 80% meat and 30% or 60% fat, you're getting all that nasty beef, you grind your own, you're not losing a lot of meat, you're getting a good product. And it looks wonderful when you cook it down. Alright. You get a shot of this pot. It's only been cooking for a few minutes. And look at that. Your beef meat's already browned down. It's nice. It's nice and separated. It's just the way you want it. And then here comes the final part. You're just going to take your potatoes. And add them to the mixture. Now, potatoes contain their own amount of liquid. So they're going to smother themselves down. Make sure you get everything nice and mixed up. There you go. You got your beef, and your potato, All right, nice and mixed up. Now you got this cooking down real well. As I said before, potatoes have their own amount of fluid in it, but it's not going to be enough fluid to keep your food from burning. So you want to add. This is about a, about a cup of water. So you want to add a cup of water to the mixture. Now, one mistake a lot of people make is they want to, once they got their mixture in here, they want to grab the seasoning and then just go nuts with it. You just want to grab it and season everything up. Don't do that. Whenever it's something that you have to reduce and cook down, you don't want to season it all the way first because what's going to happen, if somebody's finger got in the camera, What's going to happen is, when it's done being reduced, it's going to be extremely spicy. Or it's going to be very salty, and that's where a lot of people make the mistake. It's best to add your seasoning at the end of your meal's cooking. So we'll just sit there right there and it'll wait. As I said before, my brother-in-law's seasoning, uh, if you go to the end of the little show here, you will see the uh, telephone number where you can call him and order his seasoning from him directly. You can talk directly to my brother-in-law, and he'll square you away. Now, this is what it should look like right here. You got a nice little bit of moisture, everything like that. It should be going good. You got your little veggie seasons in there going well, and now you can cover it, reduce to a medium high, and let it go for about 30 to 45 minutes. All right, thank you. All right, welcome back. It's been about 20 minutes, the meal is done. Now I'm gonna show you how to take a simple meal and then make it look nice. All right, just because you're on a budget doesn't mean you have to live and look miserable. All right, food's done here. As you can see, this is what it looks like when it's cooked all the way down. Everything's nice and reduced. And get you a nice serving. This will feed a family of four easily, easily. There you go. Plenty of food left in here for four more people. You can clearly see that. All right, you got your food in here. Mm, good stuff. I said you wait till the end to season it. You add a little bit of seasoning on there to taste, however you like it. These are some chives from the garden. I'm gonna go on and chop those chives up. Throw on a little Irish spring. Chop your chives up real good. Sprinkle your chives 
on top of your meal right there. Nice and easy. There you go. Hey, you're on a budget? Nothing goes good like a bottle of Lambrusco from Rio Needy. Get you a little bit to get the stress from the day. You're getting ready to feed these, your husband or your wife and your three kids or two kids. You've done it for under eight bucks. You deserve a glass of wine and something nice to eat. Thank you very much for tuning in our show and see you maybe tomorrow or next week and we'll do something simple again. Nice, rustic, simple, and wholesome. Thank you very much.